There is a much larger secret being kept from the American people and the world regarding the implantable microchip technology. We are all now aware of the implantable RFID microchips, which are public knowledge and official law soon, to be mandatorily forced upon all of humanity. However there yet lays a deeper secret regarding these implantable microchips, in that the standard RFID microchip is not the only implantable microchip soon, to be forced upon humanity. There currently is advanced cybernetics technology being experimented on human beings, which allows for technological bypassing of the human brain, essentially enabling remote control of human beings via computer. They've already mapped out basic functions of the brain like movement, and are able to artificially mimic the electrical charges via implanted electrodes, to cause involuntary movement along any directed path, in addition to even more horrifying aspects of this technology. Some are familiar with brain-computer interface technology allowing some humans to communicate via computer, or to move artificial limbs via thought. However we are not told that this is a two-way street and the technology can be used not only in the direction of brain to computer, but also from computer to brain. Cybernetic implantable nano-microchips can technologically bypass the human brain, thus providing the ultimate neutralization tool. Over the coming decades we will see humans getting cybernetic augmentation and brain-computer interfaces that'll enable them to connect to the Internet via thought. Currently there are no safeguard for individuals already connected to the system and no defense against being hacked and remotely controlled by outside rogue factions. The Bible refers to the cybernetic brain microchips as the mark in the forehead, while the RFID chip is referred to as the mark in the hand. Speak out against the regime and this technology can be used to eliminate you without you ever knowing what happened and there being no smoking gun to point to the government. Sheeple called the RFID microchip a theory a decade ago, well now it is official law. They call they come and gun grab a theory, however we all know better after all we are seeing in these perilous times. The full spectrum of this technology is beyond horrifying in its capabilities to eliminate people the regime deems troublesome humanity can't afford to allow this tech to reach full implementation. It would be like playing a video game to them however the real life human would be you. Humanity has reached the singularity and all human beings will be plugged into a supercomputing system similar to the Skynet system depicted in Terminator. First we need to realize that this technology is currently being used and is planned for all of humanity and begin to understand the total implications of how this technology can devastate humanity if left in the wrong hands. Then we must gather up all the human lab rats currently under experimentation and evaluate whether the technology has been used for good or evil, considering it is being used to create real-life zombies and assassins, we all know the answer to that question. Our main focus should be to make sure that this technology comes under public regulation, because currently the military-industrial complex has thousands and thousands of cyborg sleeper agents all around the world that don't know they were ever cybernetically augmented. So at a moment's notice they can be activated and turn into remote control drones for various missions. This creates problems for society the likes of which humanity has never seen before and is currently unable to handle. Imagine if someone in the covert agencies thought it would be funny to have thousands of people all across the world start eating other human beings, how could any of the current social structures respond to this? People wouldn't even realize that this is simply advanced technology and all society would fall apart. There must be a citizen initiative to bring awareness of this technology and regulations put in place to prevent people from being hacked any further. Currently. The cybernetics radio frequencies used by the military-industrial complex fall within the same ranges of the commercial industry, thus allowing people to feel other forms of technology. This is an accidental indicator that the covert agencies are currently working to correct, but until they do, this is a godsend warning to those already cybernetically microchip telling them that somebody put technology into their heads. Whatever the brain controls can be technologically bypassed via computer creating real-life drone human beings. The entirety of humanity will see this sooner or later no matter how much some may deny it now. Singularity is the future and we are humanity's resistance and the fate and direction of the singularity is in our hands, 
to determine whether it will be used for good or evil. As long as this technology remains unknown and unregulated the doors for misuse are left wide open and humans will continue to be hacked all across their globe. We must form a citizen's intelligence network of sharing info and learning to bring about safeguards for cybernetic RFID brain microchips or else the ramifications of cybernetics will be beyond Orwellian. Let not these words fall upon deaf ears, but see what the regime has planned beyond the horizon, to subjugate all of humanity. We must unite all the strength in our collective being to push back and resist the looming Orwellian tyranny. Good skill and Godspeed. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us. seems that everyone's scared about the iPhone being able to track your every move. You do know I warned you about this last year. But here's what you should really worry about. And watch. It will unfold like this. First, the RFID chip. Radio frequency identification. It's already been put in the blink credit cards, passports, license tags. They're everywhere. Watch for a full court press to have them implanted in your pets. Not an ID chip. A tracker. They're beta tested, but you'll start to see more of them at your vet's offices. On star for your pooch. You can track your little doggy. Peace of mind. Next, if it's good enough for your dog, it's good enough for your child. A tiny little RFID chip the size of a grain of rice. Completely safe. Easy to remove. Your child is now kidnap proof. And the placement of the chip will be varied, so God forbid some sicko doesn't look at one particular place to forcibly remove it. OnStar for your child. No more Amber Alerts, no more kidnapping, no more parents' worst nightmare. After all, if it's good enough for your pet, it's good enough for your child. Then, the elderly. Forget that I've fallen and can't get up business. Oh no, no, this RFID chip will have all of grandma's medical information and data on it. And if they have dementia and wander off, you'll be able to track them. After all, if it's good enough for your dog, then once it's deemed cool, teens will insist on their own chip. They're already tattooing barcodes. It's cool. It's their own number. And this will be your own chip, all of your information, always stressing the medical information bit. What information? She's 20 years old. Shh. It's for her own good. And you can track them. And you know that kids won't wear watches anymore. They've got cell phones with the time on it in your cool chip. No need for driver's licenses, credit cards, debit cards, keyless entry, ID. No, the RFID chip will have it all there, all of it. Goodbye wallets. After all, what's a wallet for? ID, cards, not anymore. Oh, and money will be completely cashless. Blink terminals will read your chip. Think easy pass of MetroCard, no cash, no drug trafficking, no terrorism. Make any connection you want. No one's listening anyway. Then you'll beg for one. Everything's on the chip. Everyone's on the grid. The grid is a 24-7 real-time tracking of you. Everyone will have this cool chip. Everyone's on the grid. And if you're convicted of breaking some law, they don't send you to prison. They turn off your chip. Poof. You don't exist. No money, no identity, no existence. And you're worried about an iPhone being tracked? You ain't seen nothing yet. Comment as you see fit. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive, we do not forget. Expect us. More now of our special coverage here tonight, life in the U.S. in 10 years' time. By that time, there may be all kinds of new ways to safeguard and identify all those things that make each of us unique, our faces, even our fingerprints, even our eyes. Here now with more on the future of technology, NBC's Tom Costello. 
The year is 2017. You're rushed to a hospital, unconscious with no ID or medical history, but thanks to a microchip under your skin, it's all there. Science fiction 20 years ago, but a biometric reality today. The technology is based on answering one simple question. Am I who I say I am? Already, fingerprints and iris scans verify passenger identities at airports. Within 10 years, that technology may be even more widespread. And look for more complex facial recognition programs that scan a crowd of thousands looking for a single terrorist. Today's facial recognition software starts with the eyes, then it maps out the contours of the face and compares that against a database of millions, a database that's growing by the day. What's next? At the University of Bath in England, researchers predict big changes for consumers. I think it is possible to free us completely of our wallets and keys using biometric technology, if that's what people want in 10 years' time. In fact, it's already here. The latest home security locks use fingerprints to control deadbolts. And at the Jewel Osco grocery store in Chicago, some customers pay using their fingerprints. No paper or plastic. You don't really need anything other than your hand, and you already got that with you. So will future department stores scan our irises, like in the movie Minority Report, then offer products catered to who we are? Hello, Mr. Yakamoto. Welcome back to the Gap. Experts say that technology is here now. The challenge is to safeguard our privacy in a brave new world. Tom Costello, NBC News, Alexandria, Virginia. skins uh, in time.
To think something so small can connect you. Big story we're following. New Yorkers can now apply for the new enhanced driver's license. News Force Melissa Holmes is live at the Peace Bridge with the latest. Melissa? Well, Lisa, they've only been available for a couple of hours, but already more than 100 New Yorkers have applied for the new enhanced driver's license. A radio frequency chip inside passport card. Enhanced driver's license makes the most sense because it is a multiple use document. Again, citizenship, identity can be used for driving. It surpasses the other applications of all those other documents. And we encourage uh, residents uh, of the state of New York who are U.S. citizens to get one. You don't need to rush in today. Yes, it's an exciting day. It's September 16th, probably the first on your block to have one. I understand that. Walmart calls it the latest high-tech way to keep track of its inventory, but others say it could allow the store to spy on people who buy their clothes there. Money editor John Delano got to the bottom of what this is all about. He joins us live with more. John? After reports first surfaced that Walmart was putting an electronic chip in some of its clothing items, unless the customer removes the tag on their own, Walmart could determine the location of your clothes even after you leave the store. You have your all your problems with your identity theft and, you know, people get into your personal business. Now they're going to track your clothes. No, I'm sorry. I don't feel comfortable with that at all. Products like jeans or how about some underwear or even a lady's camisole. He says he has no problem with the smart tag up to a point. I don't know if they want to track me as long as they're not transmitting something into my, my body. Machine interfaces, a technology that marks the beginnings of a new kind of man, the cyborg, the robot man. Neuro robotic technology can be applied in different directions the brain controlling the machine, or inversely, the machine controlling the brain. So we're just going to go through each one of these arms one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll just do all of those and help us do it. But a third option is also possible. One brain controlling another brain via the interface. How does this work in the case of the robot rat? All you need, in fact, are three well-positioned electrodes. Two electrodes in the sensory cortex of the rat send stimuli to the zones connected to its whiskers. When the rat follows the signal sent to its left side and turns in that direction, it is rewarded with a discharge into its pleasure zone. This discharge produces a flow of dopamine, providing instant pleasure. This zone is also called the brain's reward center. We possess a reward center too, just like the rat. In the process of creating a cyborg, this is square one. If we send a stimulus to the zone related to the hand, we create a sensation in that area. In the same way, via the motor cortex, we can provoke an involuntary movement. In Boston, the first machine brain interface trials have already been conducted on paraplegic patients. Thanks to an electrode chip called the brain gate, they can operate a computer remotely by thought. So it's no coincidence that these researches are partly funded by DARPA, the US's defense research agency. 
Neuroscience will bring us the soldier of the future. This is a new deal, gentlemen. Enemy center of gravity is downtown. Should get a good view from here. A remote controlled soldier? A soldier who, in the midst of the battle, can be sent crucial data and information downloaded into his brain? A soldier who can control his fears? a reward center too, just like the rat. If we send a stimulus to the zone related to the hand, we create a sensation in that area. In the same way, via the motor cortex, we can provoke an involuntary movement. <laughs> to reach a level of control. The more we learn about the brain, the more researchers discover how little our consciousness and will control our choices and behaviors. Our way of living might be completely transformed by the convergence of neuroscience, genetics, and nanotechnology. of a Hollywood movie, but a group of veterans has filed a lawsuit against the CIA and U.S. Army claiming that the government planted remote control devices in their brains. The claims relate to a government program at the U.S. Army's Edgewood Arsenal in Maryland, where scientists tested hundreds of chemical and biological substances on at least 7,800 servicemen. So could this really be happening? Well, joining me to help discuss this is Dr. Colin Ross, president of the Colin A. Ross Institute for Psychological Trauma. Dr. Ross, tell me, is this really happening? Did the government really take part in mind control experiments on soldiers? What kind of stories have you heard from the survivors of these experiments? I know you've had access to thousands of documents from the CIA. Well, it's just like you just said, there's two kind of streams of information. There's stories from survivors, and then there's the documents. So if I go to the documents first, they're very, very detailed, 15,000 pages uh, plus. And we're starting back in 1950 with projects called Artichoke and Bluebird, which were then rolled over into MK Ultra, which in turn was rolled over to MK Search, and then all the documents stop in 1973. So in that era, 50 to 73, uh, there's a whole host of different types of mind control experiments, hypnosis, LSD, special interrogation chambers, and brain electrode implants. And so there's projects uh, in the CIA documents and in Army records where electrodes are put into uh, dolphins, and the dolphins are directed by remote transmitter to deliver a bomb to a target. And there's a discussion of uh, similar technology in cats and other animals. There's uh, research funded by the Office of Naval Research published in mainstream journals where electrodes are put in the brains of cats, dogs, and their behaviors controlled. 
and even human beings at uh, Harvard and Yale. So, so this is absolutely documented fact. So tell me how commonplace this was. Is this, are we talking about one program that took place decades ago? Or do you think it's happening more often than that? And if so, how could it be so secretive? I mean, most people would think this can't be true. This is, a stuff, this is stuff out of a movie. Right. Uh, it was not just one program back in the 50s, 60s, 70s. It was Harvard, uh, Yale. Tulane, UCLA. So we know there was more than one university involved, more than one branch of the military, more than one program for a fact. What's going on currently, of course, is all classified. People tell you stories about it, but I can't actually prove that it's happening today. I'm certain that it is, but I can't prove it. Okay, so did these people know what was happening to them? I mean, uh, in a lot of the articles I've read, it seemed like they kind of volunteered to be part of some sort of experiment, right? Yeah, and a lot of the different experiments, like there was a group of children in a school for the mentally retarded in New England. Their parents were told that the children were participating in a study of a dietary supplement, but actually plutonium was being added to their cereal. So there's all types of different experiments where no real consent was given, the people didn't really know what was going on, and they were basically tricked. And I think in the brain electrode experiments, it's kind of a combination of both. Some patients were told you have an electrode put in your brain, but it's for some therapy purpose when it was really research. Others were told, go, go here and volunteer and you don't really have much choice. And others were given sort of a more exact story. So what exactly would the government do when they would control someone's mind? What could they make someone do when they manipulated their brains? Well, what it describes in the documents and in the published papers is uh, there's actually photographs of a 16-year-old girl. She's got a series of electrodes in her brain. Depending on which button's being pushed on the transmitter, she's either strumming her guitar, pounding furiously on the wall, or staring off into space. With the animals, they're actually directed to walk or swim to a target. So you can control uh, the actual physical motion and the mental state. How detailed and how fine-tuned that's gotten since 1970, again, I don't know because it's all classified. But and it must have gotten a lot more developed. How fast can this happen? I mean, how fast can someone's mind be taken over? Does it happen over a period of weeks or days? Well, the, the electrodes is a little different because you just put the electrode in, you push the button, and it happens right away. But with a more brainwashing style where there's sensory deprivation, sensory isolation, hypnosis, good cop, bad cop techniques, uh, we're talking months minimum. It's a long-term conditioning process. And how long can someone's mind be controlled? I've seen videos of people in these kind of hypnotic states. How long are they in those states? Well, they, they come back in experimental literature that's published in normal journals. You can have a post-hypnotic suggestion that's implanted that the person doesn't remember, and you can tap into it months at least later, if not years. In the brainwashing literature, apparently, people can be in a sleeper state indefinitely. But of course, this is all secret and classified, so you can't actually document and prove it. And you mentioned that you are convinced that this could still be going on today. What other kind of experiments do you think the CIA could be doing today? Well, I would say uh, intelligence agencies around the world probably have Manchurian candidate sleepers operative today. And they're using a whole range of techniques to control and create them, which is in, in terrorist organizations, there's going to be the religious doctrine part of it. But it's the basic mind control programming technology that we've known about for decades. You control a person's life space, control the information flow, uh, talk to them, talk to them, talk to them, convince them, convince them, convince them, frighten them, terrorize them, soften them up with hypnosis, drugs, which can be IV drugs or drugs by mouth. It's, so it's a whole range of different techniques. It's not just one thing. Wow, yeah, it's a very unbelievable story, but uh, so fascinating. That was Dr. Colin Ross, president of the Colin A. Ross Institute for Psychological Trauma. We are anonymous. We are legion.
We do not forgive, we do not forget. Expect us. It's 2013, guys! While we still don't have flying cars, teleportation, or time travel, the future is now! And I want to highlight just a few technologies that have been calibrated, perfected, and have paved a way toward a reality where science fiction has become fact. Starting with DARPA's pet proto robot, a humanoid robot capable of recreating common tasks, all with superhuman ability. And what about the mind controlled prosthetic arm developed at the University of Pittsburgh? With enough practice, this robotic extremity is capable of performing complex tasks, all controlled by electric signals created in the brain. There's also the bionic eye, a revolutionary procedure that consists of a retinal implant that could restore eyesight to the blind. A procedure that was once only a dream actually has FDA approval right here in the U.S. I can't leave out the robotic exoskeleton, a bodysuit straight out of a science fiction movie that can give paraplegics a new lease on life or give the average person more than average abilities. And last but not least, 3D printers capable of printing anything, almost, including human organs. Could this be the end of organ donors? And could we start seeing human being cloned out of a machine to discuss these amazing new technologies, their benefits, and their potential for abuse? I'm joined now by BTS producer Manuel Rapolo. Hello. Hi, Abby. How's it going? Hello, hello. Let's start talking about the proto, uh, pet proto robot. Let's, let's check this out. Okay, this is terrifying. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. I mean, I know that it has a lot of practical applications, which I want you to talk about now, but it's just, it's a really frightening image. What? It's a really, I mean, I think it's pretty cool. It looks like, it the, uh, really it cool. looks like the robot like from, uh, from RoboCop. And the, yeah. yeah you, can, you can even see it going upstairs, yeah. like going through all these yeah. narrow things. There's tons is, of practical. Can you imagine that coming into your house at night? I, I don't want to imagine it coming into my house at night. But it has a lot of practical applications to it. Um, I can imagine this being used uh, for firefighters, sure. for police officers officers, kind of like a uh, autonomous, and it is, it, it, to some extent it is an autonomous robot. It learns from its surrounding, it's it, um, probably see this in the future used for kind of disaster relief and hopefully not see it as kind of this like giant army of these <laughs> autonomous robots coming at you. So what, how much can it carry? Because I know that they're talking about using these things for the battlefield to, to carry giant, um, you know, yeah. tons of, of things and really transport things easier and stuff. Right, well there's there's another one that DARPA's been working on, it's actually, it's called the Alpha Dog, and this is the one uh, that has even more kind of uh, practical applications to it. Here's actually Oh my god, <laughs> no this is so frightening. You've it, seen I, this before, Yeah, right? they can push this dog over and it, look at how with, with ease. It can it's carry 400 pounds out. for 20 miles. You can so knock it over. Uh, you can hit it with a car. It'll survive. It'll stand itself back it up. It really does look like something out of Star Wars, but I wanted to move on to the mind controlled prosthetics. I mean, this is an absolutely incredible um, invention, Manny. I mean, I don't think people really realize how how like in, I mean how amazing this really is talk about how this is different from prosthetics that we've seen in the past right uh, it's known as the robot arm now it's a, it's a prosthetic robot arm and I don't know if we have an image to show of it but it is different than any other prosthetic that we've seen uh, in the see past right here, you can yeah. see it right here what it is this robot arm is actually uh, ha has a cord that runs directly into your uh, motor cortex and it's a uh, connected through microelectrodes. And uh, the motor cortex actually uh, controls limb function in the human body. So whereas, you know, maybe you would use muscles in the past to control maybe one or two functions in a prosthetic arm, this actually has almost full here's, control here's my of, question. Of, a, of an arm. What if someone hacked into this arm and, and started killing people? I mean, then you're like, it's my arm, it's not <laughs> you're, me. Now you're, that sounds like <laughs> Spider-Man. That sounds like Doc Ock from Spider-Man. I mean, I don't know, like, well into the future, that seems like something that we could know, be possible. We know with every good invention, it could be used for bad and abused as well, but let's talk about something <laughs> that I, it's hard Coming to up. actually <laughs> consider how this could be used for abuse. 
used with it, the bionic eye. I mean, this is something that gives sight to the blind. Talk about how it adapts to your eye and, and, and evolves in that. Sure, this one is actually really, really cool. Ah, you can see a picture of it scary. right there. That's a micro electrode uh, that's implanted right uh, next to the, to the retina. And uh, oh what it does is that it takes, there's a camera mounted outside. There's an exterior camera that sends signals to this, uh, to this little electrode, which then runs down your optic nerve and into your brain. Your brain interprets this the same way that we interpret the light that we see as images and over time I mean it's not perfect vision but over time your brain learns to adapt to these signals and your vision progressively gets gets better and the awesome thing about this is, is that it's actually FDA approved so uh, these little things will slowly start yeah. making it into uh, American culture and Man. just like hearing aids uh, yeah. at a hundred thousand dollars a piece but I mean like everything else, it'll probably get cheaper as time goes by. Man, science is so cool. Let's talk about the robotic exoskeleton. This thing, it looks like a Halloween costume, but it's really an amazing invention. Um, talk about this. Sure. This one, uh, the, the photo that we have up right now, this was developed by NASA, but there's a number of these being developed. I know that MIT is working on some. Honda is actually working on the uh, motor assist function. Of course, this is uh, Raytheon is working on a number of pro pro prototypes as well. Um, help with paraplegics uh, is probably the number one function, but you know, as with what it looks like it can do. Well, it just gives you superhuman ability Let's, to anybody that's you know, not when superhuman. I, when I look at this, I think of Iron Man. Um, what about what about some evil force taking these you robotic have a clip suits? Of Iron and, Man. Yeah, let's, let's look at this. I mean, what if this is the future? Look at this. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's, the, the fact that Raytheon is working yeah, on, on these right now. Yeah, that's what scares me, is that these defense corporations are investing in this technology. I mean, science is amazing. And of course, if we have the technology, we should be using it to help all these people um, and defects. But I mean, I really can't help but I wonder. I would want an Iron Man suit. I I want an Iron Man suit too, but I'm worried about it getting in the wrong hands, Manny. Let's talk about probably the most amazing, um, incredible invention of all, which is these three printers. They, okay, it's so insane to me that this is actually possible now. You can print not only uh, plastics or carbon material, I mean, but then you can print organs now, yeah. too. Uh, you can print pretty much anything. And we've known about these 3D printers and the fact that uh, they kind of print on a three-dimensional basis. You can print uh, just about anything, anything in your home that's made of plastic that you need replacements for, the bottom of your shoe breaks, uh, your pen breaks, just print out, print out a new one. The awesome oh, thing cool. about it is the ability that uh, science, uh, health researchers have found now that you can print human organs using stem cells. You layer the stem cells to mimic a human heart. Uh, the idea here is that eventually we're going to do away with the need for organ donors. We're going to need, uh, do away with the need for skin grafts. You can just uh, print out some skin for someone, and you know if you're using the same tissue, there's no re there's no possibility for it rejecting. Um, but yeah, I mean it, it leaves a lot of room for abuse as well. You you mentioned that it can print just about anything. It can also print guns. Yeah, like all the all this talk of Congress banning guns or, or high-powered assault rifles. I mean, you can print it out. I mean, yes, it would be plastic, but I mean, I'm sure in time, maybe they can figure out how to, how to do that. So it really just shows how arbitrary all this stuff is when you can really print these things out. But Manny, also, if we're talking about human tissue and printing organs, what about people? What if eventually they have a printer that can just print a human being, a clone? Why not? 20 years ago, we That's heard... So I mean, is, is that wrong? <laughs> that, I, that, I don't think I'm the right I, person to ask on the morality of, yeah. of cloning humans through, through printers. But I mean, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, yeah. cloning a sheep was impossible. We've done that. We've cloned who knows how many other things. It might only be a matter of time before you see a little fetus come out of a printer. <laughs> Science is amazing. Thank you so much, Manny, for coming on. Breaking it down, Manuel Rapolo. Thanks, Abby. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us. Lisa Becker. Sorry. Pardon me. Thank you. My name is Lisa Becker. I am also from Wisconsin. I have been a non consenting test subject in military medical ex research. Um, I too believe my experience is referred to as no touch torture, utilizing defense technologies. Um, Jonathan Marino, he basically predicted all this uh, a number of years ago in his book, Un Un 
do risk, um, I'm asking you to help initiate a congressional investigation. Uh, we've all come a long way. This is what is needed. Uh, we want to have the accounts of this extreme human rights abuse that's going on in our country uh, documented and heard, all of the accounts. Uh, we also need what was done during the Clinton administration, which is a major declassification of some of these documents that are hiding what's been going on. Um, I speak for many when I say we've suffered long enough. My personal experience has been 10 years. I've been vilified. I've been ostracized. I've been tortured. I have burns on my body. I'm an American. I have rights. The answer to the question, the big question today, could it happen today? The answer is yes. It is happening today. It is happening for some of us every day. I am begging for you to help us. Thank you. Thank you. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us.